Uh, well, I mean, I obviously can't say for sure if this theory is correct. It is just my head cannon, but it makes sense on a few levels. So let's discuss that now. Or rather, I'm going to talk about it and you just sit there quietly like good little subs. Number one, they are much taller than humans, but too small to be giants. And they're only a tad larger than silver knights. So if silver knights were to become corrupted by the blight, which seems likely to happen to at least a few, it's feasible enough that they could become these ogre-looking mofos. Number two. They wield large weapons just like the Silver Knights and subsequently Black Knights did. Now, it could be said that they are just large, so it's sensible that they'd wield large weapons, but it's still worth mentioning. Number three. With the exception of very few, these creatures are stationed at all the ways in and out of Blight Town, as if there to prevent any escapees. The Depth's Entrance, the Valley of Drake's Shortcut, and the entrance to Quelag's Domain, which leads to Isolith. Even driven mad and turned into monsters, perhaps they are still performing their typical duty as guards, which we see happening in Dark Souls 3. Several knights have glowing red eyes, implying they have hollowed. The Lothric knights are outright stated to be hollow, yet still perform their duty. And of course, Londor is an entire organization and country of hollows. Number four. We find a stray club in Blighttown, seemingly guarded by two barbarians. One could interpret this as them holding vigil over the remains of a fallen ally, something I'm sure Silver Knights would do. Ultimately, this is just to make you think. They could be anything, really, but I firmly believe they are guarding the ways in and out of Blighttown very intentionally, and were at some point perhaps a part of Gwyn's faction. <laughs> 